Welcome to the Batman Villains of Old Time Radio, our amazing world of radio summer series where we examine the old-time radio careers of the talented performers who brought the 1960s TV Batman Villains to life. Now from Boise, Idaho, here's your host, Adam Graham. This week, we turn to someone who's as well-known for her work behind the camera as in front of it. As a film actress in the 1940s and 50s in particular, Ida Lupino was cast in big films that featured major stars, yet her passion became directing. She was a trailblazing independent filmmaker, the first woman to direct a film noir, and the only woman to direct an episode of the classic Twilight Zone series. And she was also a Batman villain chosen to be profiled by our Patreon supporters. She played the role of Dr. Cassandra Spellcraft in the 1968 Batman episode, The Enchanting Dr. Cassandra. She had her then-husband, Howard Duff, as her co-star as her henchman and love interest, Kabbalah. We'll talk more about their performance and the Batman episode after the podcast. Ida Lopino had a solid but limited body of radio work, oftentimes appearing in adaptations of films she'd appeared in. But I'd heard one episode of Suspense, which also features Howard Duff, and I thought the contrast between the Suspense episode and the Batman episode would be irresistible. This episode comes near the end of the Hollywood run of Suspense. It was actually the fourth performance of the script. The original was with Cary Grant and Kathy Lewis in the leads in 1950, and Duff and Lupino were the second real-life married couple to perform it after Frank Lovejoy and Joan Banks did in 1984. Here, from May 10th, 1959, is the final suspense adaptation of On a Country Road. On a Country Road, starring Howard Duff and Ida Lupino. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Oh, come on, get with it. Relax, David. We're not going to move any faster, so relax. Who can relax in a traffic jam like this? Bumper to bumper at 20 miles an hour. Must be a wreck or something up ahead. This keeps up. We'll get caught in the rain. Yeah. It's like a big storm building up. Hey, remember that shortcut? Which one? The little country road that goes across through center marches and comes out on the highway on the other side of the island. Oh, yes. You mean the one we took last summer? Yeah. Yeah, I'll turn off there and duck this jam. We'll be at home before that storm hits. Turn on the radio, will you, honey? Mm-hmm. See if you can get the news. Huh? Police this afternoon issued two warnings to all residents of Long Island to be on the lookout for Nellie Goller, a middle-aged woman described as dangerous and insane. What's that? She escaped this morning from Restview Mental Hospital after fatally butchering a doctor, a nurse, and a ward attendant with a meat cleaver. Ha-ha, my mother-in-law. Just a few minutes ago, the decapitated bodies of an elderly man and woman were found by police near Centimore Ridges on Long Island. Well, at least we're not the Residents only crazy people on Long Island. warned not to open their doors to strangers. Motorists are cautioned to stay off lonely roads and not pick up any hitchhikers. All persons are asked to be on the lookout for this woman. Here is her description again. She is tall, gray hair, has broad shoulders and long arms. She is believed to be armed with a meat cleaver, which she used in her escape from Restview Mental Hospital. Turn that off, Dorothy, will you? She will be... But you wanted to hear it. Well, that's enough of that. The shortcut will save us a lot of time. David, didn't you hear what the radio said about staying off lonely roads? Well, honey, we just have to go across to the other highway. Won't take long. Are you sure? Of course. We go past Center Moriches, then take the left road and come out right by the highway bridge. Center Moriches is where she just killed those two people. Oh, oh, come on, honey. You're acting like a child. What can happen to us while we're driving? Besides, the whole island is full of men looking for this lunatic. I'll catch you. Well, here comes the storm. David. What? 
The gas gauge says empty. Well, there's still a couple of gallons left, and it points to empty. How long has it said empty? Well, that I don't know. I'll get gas when we get across to the other highway. Darling, I'm scared. Oh, come on. Relax, honey. Honey, rain and wind always makes you jumpy as a cat. I wish we'd stayed on the highway. Well, if I'd known you'd act like this, I would have. Oh, well, it's not my fault. Well, honey, it's not mine either. I'm having trouble enough just trying to see through this storm. Oh, darling, what are we fighting about? Oh, I don't know, honey. Driving through these woods in this kind of weather is enough to give anybody the willies. Oh, it got dark so fast. I can hardly see, even in the headlight. There's something ahead. Well, don't stop, David. Oh, it's only a sign. But that crazy woman could be around here. I'm not picking up anyone. I just want to know where I am. Please don't get out of the car. I'm not. Now, calm down. Center marches to the right. I'm going to take this road here. Center marches. Well, this must be the road where she killed those people. Oh. Dorothy, please. I'm sorry. I, I'm jumpy. Oh, David, that woman, she could be anywhere in these woods. But not necessarily where we are. Up. Wouldn't you know? Come on. Well, that's that. Are we out of gas? Yeah. Oh, no. You mean we're stuck here? Well, for the time being, anyway. That woman is in these woods. She'll kill us. Now, she's nowhere near us. Calm down. David, quick. Turn off your headlight. Why? Did you see something? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm scared. You should have gotten gas back in the main road. Oh, turn off the lights, please. Why? She'll see us if you don't. Oh, for Pete's sake. Please, David, turn them off. Listen, Dorothy. Oh, darling, look at those headlights poking into the darkness at all the wet bushes and trees. Please, David, turn them off. Okay, all right, all right. There, now they're off. Feel better sitting in the dark? Uh, yes, if only the thunder and lightning would stop in this rain. Look, Dorothy, I'm going to walk up the road a bit. Maybe I can find a house and... You're not going to leave me here. I won't let you go. Oh, Dorothy, we can't sit here in the middle of nowhere for the rest of the night. But we're safer here than out there. Darling, she's probably hiding out there, just waiting for a chance to kill us. Oh, come on, Dorothy. Why should she be right where we've run out of gas? Hmm? Quick, lock the doors from the inside. Why? Lock them so that that crazy woman can't get in here. She's nowhere near here, I tell you. Please don't be mad at me. I, I know I'm being silly, but I can't help it. Come here. Come here. Let me put my arm around you. There. Oh, darling. Put your head on my shoulder. Come on. Please forgive me. Of course. I'll forgive you. Would you turn on the radio? Maybe they've caught her. Okay. Pressing their search for the escaped insane woman who has killed five persons since fleeing from a Long Island mental hospital. Rain and darkness are hampering the search. Over 100 police are combing the wooded area... Turn it off. Right. Now, look, Dorothy. We we can't sit here all night. I'll run up the road. There, there might be a house. Oh, no, David, please, please don't leave me. Listen. Hmm? Do you hear that? What? I don't hear anything. Listen. There it is. I don't hear... Huh. It's a dog. It's just a little dog bark. Oh, David. Maybe it's lost, or maybe there's a house nearby. Oh, that woman. <laughs> David! She's out there. Something at the back of the car. It's her. She'll kill us. Is the door locked on your side? Yes, yes, but what if she breaks the window? She has a cleave. In that flash of lightning, I saw somebody. Is that her? Can't tell. It's lying on the road. Oh, can you see her? Is she still there? It's too dark to see. Have to wait for the lightning. <gasps> there she is. She's getting up now. She'll kill us. She'll kill us, David. Calm down, calm down. Please, please. Oh, what is she doing? I don't know. She must have been running. She didn't see the car. She ran right into it. Ah! Look at the window, David, right next to you. Good Lord. Look at her. Get away from that window. Let me in! Let me in! Let me Where is it? Dorothy, in the glove compartment, quick. I have it. Here it is. 
Look. I've got a gun. I'm going to shoot. She's backing away. I'll keep on going before I start shooting. David, she's gone. She disappeared. I can't get out now. All we can do is sit here all night and wait for help. Can you see her? Where did she go? I don't know. I don't know. She's out there somewhere. I'll be planning on how to get into this car. Darling, what are we going to do? She's the one. I know our face was completely insane. You saw it. Yeah. She's probably back there looking for that cleaver now. She'll kill us. She'll kill us. Now, Dorothy, Dorothy, stop. Please. She'll kill us, David. David! David! The window! She broke the window. Get away from there. Stay out of the car. I'm coming in. I can't stand it out here. Stay out of the car. I warn you, I've got a gun. You wouldn't shoot me. Go away, do you hear? You're crazy. We know all about you. I'm not the crazy woman. Listen to me, please. My car is stuck in the ditch back there. How far back? I don't know. It seems like miles. I heard about the crazy woman on the radio. I was afraid to stay in the car alone. Let me in. Please. No, don't, David. Go back to your own car. I can't. It's so dark and so lonely. And this storm. I locked the doors, but I was afraid. I could see things and hear things in the darkness. I couldn't stand it anymore. I got out and I ran. It's the rain. That's why I look like this. I'm not the crazy woman. Oh, for the love of heaven, let me in. Please. Let me in. I don't... I... No, 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 David. Don't let her in. Oh, the crazy woman had a cleaver. I'm not armed. Listen, the three of us will be safer together. I don't know. What do you think, Dorothy? I don't know. I don't know. Let me in, please. I'm I'm wet to the skin. All right. Get in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You make one move, and I'll shoot you. Oh, it's so good to sit down. There's a blanket on the floor back there. You can dry yourself off with it. The darkness and the rain... That was enough to drive me out of my mind. Just take it easy. Do you live near here? I live farther out, near Restview. Restview is the mental hospital. I know. I'm used to the crazy people, but not at night in a lonely place like this. Not the kind who kill people. You, uh, you live at Restview? No. I live just near there. David... We can't sit here not knowing. We could just get to a phone. A phone? Why? To call the police. Get some help. No. No, don't do that. Why not? Why don't you want the police? Oh, oh, oh I do. But you'll be killed. What do you mean? That woman. She'll kill him if he goes away from this car. David, listen. There's that dog again. Do you hear her? Somebody's out there. Might be a house nearby. He's barking to be let in. It sends her somebody. There's somebody out there. That's why it's barking. That woman's out there. Quick! Let's get away before we're caught. David, look out. Let go of me. What are you trying to do? Start the car. Quick, we'll get away. We're out of gas. Out of gas? Well, we, we, we just can't sit here. We've got to get away. I'm not a magician, lady. I can't make gasoline out of rain. We can't stay here all night. Do you hear me? Now, let go of me. There's nothing I can do. Try something, anything. Don't just sit there. She scares me, David. Stop her. Now, cut it out. You'll have us all in hysterics. All right. All right, I'm sorry. Ariella, look, I've got an idea. Give me your gun. What? Give it to me. What's the matter with you? I can't sit here all night. I'll go crazy. Give me the gun. I'll go for help. I won't be afraid in the dark with the gun. No, no. Sit back. Go on. I'll go right now. Just give me the gun. We don't have a gun. It's only a pipe. Dorothy. A pipe? A smoking pipe? Oh, David, I'm sorry. Then... Then you're... You're unarmed. I'm sorry, David. It's all right. It's all right. Why did you tell me you had a gun? Why does it make a difference to you whether I'm armed or not? I don't know you. Maybe you two are more dangerous than the crazy woman. I'll tell you what I think. I think you're the crazy woman. The way you grabbed David when you wanted him to start the car. Dorothy, Dorothy, stop it. Don't excite her. Uh, don't excite me. Why? What can I do? Just an old woman you took into your car. 
Two of you and you're afraid of me? We're not afraid of you. Now sit back in the seat and don't try anything. And remember that I'm watching you all the time. <sighs> David, the storm's dying down. Moon's coming out. Maybe now's the time. The time for what? What are you going to do? You two are up to something. My wife meant that now is the time to go for help. No, I didn't. I meant now's the time for us to escape. David, can't you see it? She's the one. She'll kill us. You... Stop it. Sit back in that seat. You haven't got a gun. No, but I've got a knife. David. It's my pocket knife, but it's sharp. Now, don't you try any tricks. All right. Threaten me. Watch me while that woman is out there. Oh, you make me sick. All you can do is sit and wait for her to make the next move. She'll kill us, David, like she did that old man and woman. It must have been on this same road. They were in their car, too. They must have let her in. Oh, stop it. We'll leave, then. The three of us. We'll walk. We'll stay close together, see? We'll be quiet. Anyone hiding in the woods won't hear us. Don't get out of the car, David. We'll be killed. Easy, dear. How would we find our way? It's too dark. We'll find our way. Look out there. Roads full of shadows. Get her out of the car, David. I tell you, she wants to kill us. Kill you. If you want to go, why don't you leave? You don't need us. We're willing to stay here until help comes. I'd be helpless alone if I had a gun or something. It's your knife. Why doesn't somebody come? Where are the police? I can't stand this. Nobody will come. There's no one in these woods. No one but us. David, in her hand, I saw it in the moonlight. It glittered. What? Your wife is hysterical. Oh, she was holding it. A long piece of broken glass, long and pointed. She's the crazy woman! You think I'm going to sit here defenseless? David, she's going to attack us. Don't be silly. It was all right for you to have a knife. Why can't I protect myself? Give me that piece of glass. I will not. You couldn't protect us from anything. Give me that piece of glass. I won't. I warn you, give it to me. Stay away from me. Once I'd left the car, you were going to stab my wife with a broken glass. No! No! Give me that glass. You're crazy. Give it to me. Let me alone. Hold her, David. Hold her. Don't let her free. Oh, she's strong. She's got my arm. No. Kill me. Drop that. Drop that glass. She dropped it. She dropped it, David. Have you both gone crazy? Trying to kill me. Like you were going to murder us. I wasn't. Don't let her get free. I can't hold her much longer. She's strong. If you have a knife, then I'll have glass. Hold her, David. Hold her. I can't. Not much longer. I'm not crazy. I'm not. She, I'm she not. Got my throat. She's choking me. Your knife, David. Your knife. Ah! Ah! You killed her, David. You killed her. I couldn't help it. She was choking me. Darling, you you're covered with blood. She's gonna kill us. Oh, listen, David. listen. Car's coming. It's all right, darling. Help's coming. Hey there, you in the car? What are you doing parked here? It's the police at last. Well, uh, you see, officer, we ran out of gas. Well, and... A night to run out of gas. What a spot with that woman running around loose. Officer, we want to tell you. Farmer up the road called us. Said his dog's been barking at something. We caught her. Who'd you catch? The crazy woman. She's in the back seat, dead. What? No, no, she's still alive. Badly hurt, though. She, she was trying to kill us. Well, we'll get her to the hospital. You come with me. Lucky you didn't kill her. We captured that crazy woman a half hour ago. I don't know who this lady is. <laughs> Suspense. 
Welcome back. I didn't cut the commercials from this recording. That's how it came. But I have to say that I actually like it this way. While I generally appreciate commercials, I think this story is better without them as you get this very tense, suspenseful story and there is no let up or break from the tension. Of course, the episode is superbly acted and you wouldn't expect anything less with Duff and Lupino as your leads. But let's just appreciate the sound effects. They really provided great atmosphere and gave the actors something to feed off of and for them to really match their energy to. This is just a great example of the power of audio drama to really create a mood and take you somewhere. Uh, the story illustrated that in a very tense situation, the sane yet frightened and paranoid people can be just as dangerous as a maniac. Also, if the radio tells you to stay away from country roads due to the presence of a homicidal maniac, you might want to do that, particularly if you're running on empty and haven't been bothered to check your fuel gauge. According to the Suspense Project, which every day is pretty much is posting an episode of Suspense with uh, background information and all available recordings, uh, including some that have not been circulated, uh, this particular episode was written by Walter Bazar, who was, and I hope I pronounced that right, B A Z. A.R., who is finishing his work at the University of Columbia School of Journalism in 1950. He'd go on to have a successful career as a journalist, and this is uh, apparently the only radio script he wrote. And of course, it's an absolute corker. I should note that when the Suspense Project gets to this particular episode, they may have updated information and maybe even an upgraded broadcast with uh, commercials, depending on what uh, episodes that they find. However, at their pace of an episode a day, they're probably not going to get to this one for a year or so, because uh, currently they are working through episodes from 1951, and this aired in 1959. But you can follow their work over at suspenseproject.blogspot.com. Now on to talking about the Batman episode, The Enchanting Dr. Cassandra. As I said at the top of the program, Ada Lupino plays Dr. Cassandra, who is an alchemist and from a family a lineage of female alchemists who have come up with great achievements in alchemy that have major flaws that end up being their undoing. She has her own... Uh, innovation, a formula that can effectively allow you to turn invisible, but really just allows you to blend into your surroundings. Uh, she has a big plan to take over the city. And so I have to say, first of all, that I liked both uh, her and Kabbalah. Uh, Lupino and Duff both really embraced the spirit of the series, and it's glorious. Kabbalah is more amusing than useful. He uses a lot of slang and is pretty much the muscle and the smitten love interest of Dr. Cassandra, who serves to ask questions that gets her to exposit her plan. Now, it should be noted that Duff had actually appeared in Batman previously in a window cameo as his character in Felony Squad Sergeant Sam Stone. So this character is a major change, but Duff fully committed to it. And I think it's funny seeing him take on this role, which is really massively against type. Now, I've heard some reviewers complain that the slang used was even out of date for 1968 with things like Daddy-O and mommy -o. But to be fair, they're playing a middle-aged couple using that lingo. And I think being slightly out of date in your efforts to look hip and cool makes it more funny as it makes 
Kabbalah seemed kind of like a poser, but again, like I said, in an amusing way. As the main villain, Dr. Cassandra has a lot going on. She's bold and daring. She actually stopped Commissioner Gordon from using the Bat Phone and called Batman herself to taunt him, you know, using her uh, power to blend in. In addition to the pill, she has a ray gun called the Alvino Ray Gun that she uses to turn Batman, Robin, and Batgirl into living two-dimensional characters that she has slid under the door to Commissioner Gordon's office. Now, another cool thing about the Alvino Ray Gun is that it was named after Alvino Ray, who was the band leader of the band that composed the theme to the Vincent Price classic film, The Bat. Dr. Cassandra's scheme is to use her pills to break into the Gotham pen and break out the master supervillains inside to join forces with her. It's a big, bold plan. And I really love it. Uh, Plot-wise, we also get the nice moment when Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara, uh, when they don't know what to do, decide to call the voice on the other end of the phone because Alfred has picked up the bat phone when they call often, uh, you know, without identifying himself, obviously. And so they have that idea to reach out directly to him for help. Has Commissioner Gordon mailed the terrific trio to general delivery where he picks them up, takes them to the bat cave, and there is a device to undo the effects of the Alvino ray gun because, uh, of course, there is. Well, what doesn't work about this episode? Well, there's the whole point about the pills allowing people to blend in but not become invisible. I have no idea what that means in this context. Now, in a larger budget program, maybe you could have special clothes made for the actors and show from some vantage point how they were blended into the background. But this is a low budget season three Batman episode and effectively people are just invisible. And that brings up a bigger point. Season three of Batman saw the budget cut and the episodes reduced from two a week to one a week. And there was not much uh, budget left for this episode, which had a lot of fairly ambitious ideas that could have benefited from being a two-parter with a more generous budget as was available in the previous season. When Dr. Cassandra shot the terrific trio with the Albino ray gun, they all just stood still in one simple line and let her because we didn't have time for anything else. When she broke the supervillains out of Gotham Penitentiary, they were obviously using bad doubles for all of the actors and using recordings of things like Cesar Romero and Frank Gorshin's laughter and using a recording of Burgess Meredith's quacking. They also goofed with some of the villains used. King Tut was broken out but was insane and it had been returned to his right mind and was back to being a professor of Yale at the end of his last appearance, so shouldn't have been in jail. The double use for Catwoman looked like Julie Newmar, even though Eartha Kitt, who was black, had taken over the role in season three. And that brings us to the final fight scene, where after Alfred restores them to three dimensions and slinks away, the terrific trio emerge in the villain's lair and find themselves facing their deadliest foes, plus Cassandra and Kabbalah, who all take their pills and blend into the surrounding and then attack our heroes. The lowest budget fight scene occurs, with our heroes pretending to be pushed around And eventually, Batgirl solves it by realizing they can even the odds by turning off the light so the villains can't see them. So the last minute of the fight scene occurs with sound effects in the dark and comic book bubbles splashing every few seconds to announce a hit. After watching this, I said that this was a bit disappointing, But my wife thought I was being too nice. She was actively annoyed by the way they handled the scene. So overall, this episode had some really good moments. It had great potential, 
but was really hindered by both the budget and the Season 3 runtime. Now, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Loose, Patreon supporter since April 2021, currently supporting the podcast at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. That's all for now. Join us back here next week. Same bat time, same bat podcast.